I'm here uh, with my longtime friend, Caitlin Rose Kenny. My name is Waylon Lewis with Elephant Journal. And uh, if you're just tuning in, say where in the world you're from, we're going to be talking about a Boulder event, mm -hmm. but it has, um, you know, worldwide resonance and uh, connections. Mm -hmm. So Caitlin, we've known each other for a long time, a little bit. Mm -hmm. And what the heck are you doing oh here in Boulder? What am I doing here in Boulder? Just um, generally, and then how did the new thing happen? And yeah. Um, well, in Boulder, I've been a yoga and mindfulness teacher for over 13 years. Um, and then when the pandemic hit, I started working on farms and volunteering out on the farms. And, and you grew up here. And Boulder. I grew up here. Yeah. yeah. Like me. Yeah. Like you, yeah. which is why we've known each other so long. <laughs> yeah. Kind of. I grew up first. That's true. Not maturity. -wise, you were always but, here. And then yeah. I came and then, yeah, yeah. yeah we'd Whatever. see each other at Trident. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so yeah, once I went out to the farms during the pandemic, I started to want to find ways to bring people out to the farms more often. Um, and I founded an organization called Threshold Collective that does events solely on farms. Like we only do the events on the farms so that we can get more people out to the farms and interacting with local farmers, knowing where food comes from. And also the beautiful landscape is out there too. So it's basically just helping people connect with the place that they live in more. And then we bring them out there with these really unique events that are designed to support the thresholds of life. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds really broad. But let's slow down mm -hmm. for one sec. So uh, the connection with farms mm -hmm. came, I assume, out of your personal interest and your mm -hmm. personal longing for connection with food and where it comes from. But, um, you know, it's important for us to acknowledge, like most of us have no idea where our food comes from. Right. We get it packaged, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So what is the point of kind of reconnecting? Yeah. I mean, I know it sounds good, but like, what is the power in your own life mm. of reconnecting with farms and farmers and doing yoga classes there and yeah. other kinds of classes? Yeah, no, this is huge. So I think the most obvious thing for most people to recognize is that the quality of our food matters, right? Like, if our food is nutritious, grown in soil that has lots of nutrients and minerals in it, then we'll, it matters, right? we'll be healthier, right? As opposed to like factory farming style, like where the earth isn't yes. happy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's like the num you know, the number one thing I think that we all are aware of is that our health is dependent on the quality of our food. But the other thing that we also need to consider is that most of the land in the United States is owned by farmers and ranchers. Mm -hmm. Most of it's a shocking statistic. We could look it up after this. I think it's like 80%, 80% of the land in the United States is ranch or farmland. Wow. And so what this means, oh, um, like it. All right, we're, we're back on Instagram. I have my mindful uh, Instagram limit that just kicked in. Sorry about that. Oh, that's and great. now we're being unmindful and we're going longer. Yeah. <laughs> we're back. So yeah. what I was saying is that 80%-ish- Doing ranches there, that was good. 80%-ish <laughs> of the land in the US is owned by farmers and ranchers. And a lot of that land has been really depleted. It's been sucked dry of the minerals, it's been tilled. And so that's why we're actually seeing all of these dust storms running across this country. Is so because... conventional farming practices, while it can produce mm -hmm. a lot of yield, is sort of extractive, right? It's extractive, it depletes the soil, it releases carbon into the atmosphere from the tilling practices and carbon climate crisis, which affects yeah. all of us. Yeah. But fast forward yeah. on all this is climate crisis. Yeah. <laughs> so, but so farming is actually, if it's like 80% of the U S it's one of the great hopes, if we can flip it around to more regenerative, exactly like the yellow barn where you do a lot of your, yes. Yeah. Your stuff. Yeah. So I collaborate with yellow barn farm, elk run farm, Dharma's garden, which is an urban farm, five acres in North Boulder. And so threshold collective does all of the events on farms so that people can start to get to know their farmers. And these are farmers that are doing incredible things. They're right. not only producing really healthy food, they're stewarding this land, both the cultivated land and the natural landscapes in really responsible ways that are actually improving the landscape mm. instead of ruining them. And then, yeah. yeah. And as they're improving it, the food is actually healthier and yummier. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's such a virtuous cycle, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, and it's, you know, no knock on conventional yoga studios, but a lot of them mm -hmm. feel like you're going to like a 
department store or something. Yeah. You're, instead, we're doing yoga out. You're doing it yeah. out on the lawn or. Yeah, out on the lawn or during yeah. the winter, we do it in the barn. Yeah. Um, another thing I just want to nod to is supporting local people, <laughs> people mm. who you know are there on your side doing the right thing for the community. A lot of yoga studios, and this is not a knock on them because I know they're trying to find yeah. their way in the world too, but a lot of yoga studios are renting from real estate owners that don't live locally and have no interest in environmental causes, much less the local movements. And so indirectly, when we go to local studios, our money is filtering out of our local area because it's going to these landowners that... yeah you know, are just, yeah. Yeah. And if it's hot yoga, particularly, it can be super yeah. consum consumptive, uh, consuming mm -hmm. of energy. And if they don't own it mm -hmm. again, no knock on them because mm -hmm. they're doing the best they can, mm -hmm. but if they don't own it, then they can't put the solar panels or whatever, you know, they can't try to mitigate that. Right. Yeah. So this increases transparency and in what I like to call local loop economies, which means that you just keep running the money through your yeah. local. Yeah healers, teachers, farmers, food system providers, chefs, all of these things. And that's what we're really generating is a culture of local loop economy mm -hmm. that naturally gives us a reason to care. <laughs> like we care about the planet. Mm -hmm. We care about each other. We care about where food comes from. And it's all just an organic thing that happens when you bring community together on a farm. Mm. It sounds so like healthy and like good community and kind of mm -hmm. romantic in the sense of like, you know, when you read some old book and you're like, Oh, I want to be there. Yeah. Like farmer's market kind of has that same romance, mm -hmm. but um, I know creating an event is a ton of work as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. What is it like for you doing these programs mm -hmm. as opposed to like teaching at the old studios? Yeah. Um, does it feel fulfilling and is it a ton of work and mm -hmm. exhausting or What's that like? It's a ton of work and it's really, really fulfilling. And yeah. I think part of why it's so fulfilling is that I'm not just interacting with people who want to have a yoga class. I'm interacting with farmers and scientists and landscapers. Um, I'm interacting with Boulder County representatives yeah. who are thinking about what are we doing with the green belt? How are we mm -hmm. doing grazing projects on the land that regenerate the soil? So my life has expanded in the most interesting ways by being, by getting outside of my yoga bubble, essentially. Mm -hmm. And because for a long time, you were just teaching yoga yeah. a ton, which mm -hmm. is great, but mm -hmm. you really did expand your world. Yeah. Hugely. And everyone who comes. Yeah. And it's mutually beneficial. It's yeah. symbiotic, right? You know, people who are out on the farm, they want to also do yoga and have wellness practices too. And so we're basically all just getting together, having more conversations. Right. That's so interesting. So like the farmers, they're working their butts off. Maybe they're having, you know, having occasional social or partying or whatever, but they may not have the time or mm -hmm. take the time to do yoga or take care of themselves always. Mm -hmm. So you're kind of bringing it to them too. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Super inspiring. So mm -hmm. tell us specifically about a lot of people who are watching will not, you know, aren't local to Boulder, yeah. but tell me about like the last threshold mm -hmm. and maybe first, mm -hmm. what's the the upcoming this weekend yeah. Threshold program. Totally. So my organization is called Threshold Collective because we're dedicated to supporting the thresholds of life. Mm -hmm. And we're in a lot of thresholds right now. We're in an environmental crisis threshold. Mm -hmm. We're in a socioeconomic threshold that is really, really intense. How do we grapple with these different thresholds that we're in collectively right now. What do you mean by the socioeconomic one? Just Essentially the, the continuing just, um, gap between the rich and Got the it. Got not it. rich. Let's just oh. put it that way. Right? When I bike home, I'm <laughs> going along the bike path, the creek path, mm -hmm. and there's literally homeless tents everywhere. And then the creek and then like multi-million dollar homes right. and then the flat irons, the mountains. Right. Yeah. We have, yeah. we have a lot to reckon with. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So these are tough conversations. Um, and I think it's really important that we address them and we do so in a way that is respectful, where we bring a lot of different views together. 
something I'm really passionate about is not siloing our causes Mm -hmm. because when we silo our causes, we're just in an echo chamber. And we also might not be able to think more about a system that is interlocking and interpenetrating. So anything we do over here is going to have an impact over there Mm -hmm. and vice versa. And I think this is part of where we could improve in terms of our activism these days is instead of being in these silos, bring more conversations together into the same space Mm -hmm. so that we can reinforce one another. And so that's what the threshold events are all about. Um, That's so interesting because I'm, I love being a connector and connecting different people who maybe could help each other out, but are, but are isolated, but you're doing that with like communities. Mm -hmm. And do you find that these different, the scientists or the farmers or the yogis or whatever have similar problems or a lot of delight when they come together where they can help each other? Oh my gosh. I just think at this stage, everybody is so fascinated to learn from one another, which is like a really exciting stage to be at is that it ignites your curiosity yeah. and you're like, wait, tell me about what you're doing. Like when yeah. I go out to the farm, I learn something new every time. Mm. And again, it's bi-directional, right? Like the things that I have to share, they value the things that they have to share are new and interesting to me. And so that's what we do is we get all of these people together and we start talking about these threshold conversations and just adding education and possibility into the mix. People naturally connect with one another and reinforce each other. So if people attend this weekend, what's in store for them? Like, what does the actual day look like? Oh my gosh, this is such a beautiful and unique event. Um, So we start off the day with a local singing choir that sings us into the threshold of the entire event. And they walk us into the space and sing to us. Yeah. Then we have live musicians and a dialogue with either one person, a keynote speaker or a panel. We kind of alternate which style we're doing. Um, We listen to them and then we get a little bit more music just to integrate what we just listened to. And then we go on a break and the break. It's cool. You have these transitions or pauses. Yeah. It's like braiding. You do music and then you do a dialogue and then you do a break and you walk around the farm and then you plant a tree and then you come back to listen to music. Do we really plant a tree? You can. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I love this. Yeah. Yeah. Buddhism is all about thresholds and, you know, bowing before you enter and the Tories and all that. Uh, Um, But Typically, a lot of us get burned out, including me, mm-hmm. because we don't take those pauses or the, yeah. that rhythm. We're just like, yeah. Oh. yeah. So we're just one thing to address burnout. Because yeah. hey, let's be realistic: we're all burned out and we're all overscheduled. I think it's. I just want everyone to know you're going to be so nourished by this mm-hmm. event because we have local food. We have a gorgeous farm. If you just want to go walk on the farm, we also have Reiki and cranial sacral practitioners who are volunteering their time to support you while you're there. Wow. And then this is also my favorite thing about like they this. They're not paying for those like included or it's included. Wow. Yeah. It's really special. And then um, we also have artists on site who provide art materials and we have some really special thematic art projects that you can engage in if you want where you can make crepe paper flowers and then go out to the installation that's this big collective nest and you can put your prayers and your flowers in the collective nest Hmm. so it's really rich and to your point we we're all exhausted Hmm. and this is the type of thing where you can just arrive and take it in and do what you want to do. You can close your eyes, you can lay down, you can Mm. doodle on an art pad, you can connect with somebody if you want to connect with somebody. So it's a really supportive space. So I'm still curious, like, so you did one before, how did that Mm. go? Amazing. Yeah. 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 That one was on death, dying and grieving. Right. So which is a major threshold. Yeah. And then this one is more spring oriented, Mm -hmm. more new life. Yeah. Birth, rebirth and revolution. Right. Yeah. And then would you repeat them hypothetically in the future? Yes. And we're always adding relevant conversations to the time. Sure. Um, They'd be different, but you might repeat that cycle. Correct. Yeah. Wow. Uh And they go with the seasons. So I'm, Mm -hmm. so what did you do last time in a little more depth? Oh my gosh. We had a panel on hospice, which was, that was so popular. Everybody had so many questions about what is hospice care and what really matters when people are dying and, it was just so beautiful to have that. Um, 
We also had rites of passage conversations, right? So sometimes we go through an ego death or we go through a major life transition, a divorce, a change in job. Maybe we get sick, hmm. these types of things. And how do we grapple with those experiences in life? So we had some people sharing how, how we can move through those rites of passage and feel supported. And it should have been there. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. You can be there this it's fall. It's really humbling. Yeah. 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 Well, I'll be fine by the fall. Yeah, but, but there will always be another yeah, one. Exactly. <laughs> Damn it. I know. Yeah. Um, and then I guess, you know, final question, uh, if, unless you have anything else you want to bring up, but final question is like, this is an immense amount of work. So how the heck did this just sort of all arise suddenly mm -hmm. at, you know, whatever stage in your life? And how can we all make this work mm. in a sustainable or even regenerative way for you? Yeah, thank you for asking that question. You know, how it arose was really um, a deep listening of being on the farms. And, mm. and to me, I think that spirit um, delivers visions to us. And that's what creativity is. Like when we feel the desire to write or to dance or to... Um, create art, that that spirit delivering a creative vision, and it's only going to be there for a little while. But if we say, yes, I'm going to create this, then something really magical can happen. And so you had some inspiration and you said, okay, I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go for it. Yeah. And how, and, and then the amazing experience of kind of a magnetism of the most incredibly talented, wonderful people finding me and Threshold Collective and showing up for it. Our volunteer team for this summit is the same as the volunteer team for the death summit. That's yeah. how dedicated that and says a lot. Yeah. like, yeah, just that people committed come back these for people more. are. Yes. Wow. Yeah. All right. Caitlin Rose, Kenny, yeah. Threshold Collective this weekend. People can go to, what's the website? Or You can go to Threshold Collective's website. It's thresholdco.co, thresholdco.co. Cool. And you'll find the Spring Threshold Summit there. And you can also follow us on Instagram. We've got all kinds of links and stuff up there. And is it Threshold Co on Instagram? Or? Yes, it is. Okay. Yep, exact same. Mm -hmm. Amazing. You're amazing. Yes. So inspiring. We need this. Um, please uh, follow normally... We might, we'll make this a collab so you can follow above okay. um, and we'll put the info in the caption. Thanks everyone. Thank you everyone. We have a puppy here. <laughs> I know, I wanted Wouldn't to show be right. the puppy. Yeah, too. without the puppy. The snuggle puppy right there. And then, oh, there we go. Goodness. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Caitlin. <laughs>